Hello everyone, this is Khan from Headquarters and this is our new episode and I'm hosting a great friend, Eamon Carey, online with us. And today we will talk about a little bit early stage startups. We used to talk about commuting and how the cities are much better after COVID. I mean, we, are, we have no bad means, of course. But uh, without further ado, uh, hello Eamon, thanks for coming to our session. We are really excited to talk with you as well. Um, and for people who haven't met with you before, would you like to introduce yourself? What do you do? And maybe a little bit about Techstars. I'm sure that I'm not, I doubt that nobody doesn't uh, know about Techstars. So. For sure. Well, well, first off, thank you for, for having me. Welcome, uh, everyone, to my kitchen. I don't, don't always host. It's only certain events I host in my kitchen. Um, it's, it's great to be here. Great to have the opportunity to, to talk to everyone. Um, my name is, is Eamon. I'm the, the managing director of Techstars here. Uh, in London. Um, before all of that, I was I was a founder myself, so I started my first company back home in, in Ireland uh, 15 years ago now. Um, and so started and, and, and scaled and, and sold uh, two companies, had another one that we ran into a brick wall and learned a lot of lessons from. Um, and really ever since 2014, I've been actively angel investing in companies, um, mentoring at Techstars actually since they came to Europe in, in 2013. Um, and then joined them full time uh, as, as an investor out in New York uh, in 2015. So I was in New York for, for two years and then came back to, to run the program here in London in, in 2018. Um, I'm also a partner at The Fund, which is a, a pre-seed fund focused on uh, opportunities in, in Europe. In my case, we also have a sister fund in New York and, and LA. Um, so pretty active pre-seed and, and seed stage investor. Um, for folks who don't know Techstars, Techstars runs accelerator programs around the world. So we're the, the worldwide network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. And we run startup weekends in over 160 countries around the world, getting people together for 48 hours to meet potential co-founders, pitch their ideas, you know, build out MVPs and get some amazing feedback and do some great customer development and maybe even start companies. Um, the accelerator programs that we run, we, we now run over 45 of them uh, across Europe, the US, uh, the Middle East and, and, and out into Asia. And there we invest up to $120,000 into companies. We bring them uh, into our office or virtual office over the last little while uh, for three months where we connect them with some amazing mentors, investors, advisors, uh, partners, and other people who can help those companies grow and scale. And over three months, try and cram two years or three years worth of knowledge and learning and experience uh, into that short period of time and then continue to support the companies as they grow and, and, and scale from there. So, so far, We've invested in 2,200 companies uh, around the, the world over the last 12 uh, or so years. Um, we've, those companies have raised over $9 billion in funding. We've had, uh, we had the first ever accelerator backed IPO a couple of years ago with SendGrid. Um, so lots and lots of, of amazing companies in the portfolio and hopefully many more uh, to come. So, and and I'm, I'm sector agnostic, so I've invested in everything from games and education to b2b drones and hardware and software so i'm uh, i'm open to anything so that's the 100 mile overview uh, i'm sure that we are going to add like tech stars links mm -hmm. as well on the youtube channel and also instagram i'm sure that people already know uh tech stars in one way or another you have a great portfolio it's really diverse there are a lot of companies like centric billion billions of dollars worth so i you're also going to uh kick off the next program so you are receiving a lot of applications and whenever we have a huge event in the world we generally tend to have a new trend so I want to talk about like early stage startups because personally you also invest in there do you see new kind of trends emerging within the uh, new uh, startups because we always sell like we have uber then few batches we always have on demand then we have airbnb we always have like sharing economy so what do you see like do you feel any trends are emerging right now we've certainly seen some sectors become really exciting um and and we've certainly seen a lot of interest in in, in certain sectors so i would say anything to do with the future of work, particularly right now. Obviously, everyone is kind of thinking, are we going to go back into offices? What's that going to look like? What are the communication systems going to be that we use? How are we going to kind of engage with one another? How are we going to do business? So lots of companies looking at, uh, at, at that sector. We've seen an awful lot, like a real explosion in, in the number of companies targeting the education sector. Um, and I think both from a consumer perspective, and again, I think a lot of people are 
you know, particularly people who have kids are teaching their kids at home at the moment and, and, and kind of experiencing what it's like to be a teacher for the first time. Um, but also B2B tools for, for schools and for educators and teachers and, and, and others to kind of man, manage and maintain those relationships as well as some really interesting stuff happening in, uh, in machine learning uh, in, in education and, and adaptive algorithms and personalized learning algorithms. And we just made an investment in a company that we'll be announcing pretty soon in, in, in that space. And so, you know, education is another one. I think also entertainment. I think, you know, the, the last few months have been a pretty uh, brutal assault of bad news, I would say. And, and so we've seen huge growth in the number of downloads, well, headset sales in, in VR, you know, games, you know, can all of these types of apps that are just allowing people to take a step away from from what's happening in the world. And then the other interesting one that we've seen this, particularly this year, is, is a lot of people thinking about what, what does the future of, of fashion look like? Uh, so we saw kind of a, a bunch of fashion tech companies over the, you know, maybe four or five, six years ago. Um, and now all of a sudden, again, we're seeing a kind of explosion in, in, in that world. So a couple of really interesting trends that we're that we're tracking um, and certainly yeah we still see the on demand you know and I, I think now the big thing is you know everyone is trying to be more sustainable more ethical um, you know to think a little bit more about the impact that they're having on the world we see a lot of businesses like Tom's and Bombas and others that are doing the kind of one for one or businesses that have a you know double bottom line in terms of revenue and benefits so you know I think that's been something that's that's been quite interesting and also then everything is like stories and experiences, right? I think uh, Airbnb experiences, even though we can't really have as many of them as possible, I think people are thinking about how to bring, bring those into the, the online um, realm. But, you know, there's no shortage of, of creativity, no matter what else is happening in the world. I mean, uh, especially like entertainment industry went dessert because uh, a lot of like offline side of the things gone really wrong. And, I don't know when are going to, when they are going to recover fully. Um, everybody is like assuming maybe we have one more year and we don't know how is how we will live this life. But I was also surprised in the fashion because I've seen a lot of like big even fashion companies already open the line like home office because yep. uh, tops are much better and more appealing than the bottoms that we have. So people yep. are looking for casual in the bottoms, but maybe more appropriate for like VCs and those kind of things yep. because we will have more and more calls and it is getting normal. Since we are talking about that, uh, we've been also doing the programs online. We switch everything. Honestly, I'm quite happy. Mm -hmm. But uh, how was your like work experience so far? Because uh, you also mentioned that that industry is kind of changing as well in the meantime. And also yourself, how do you see it happening? Do you like it that way? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I suppose for, for me, well, I'll talk about myself personally, and then I'll talk about tech stars. But I think for me, I've always been pretty comfortable working off my laptop or iPad or, or phone. So normally, kind of at this time of year, you know, certainly the first half of the year before we, we start our program, I'm usually traveling, you know, 50 or 60 percent of the time. So we do a lot of traveling around to different events or, you know, hosting meetings or going to conferences or various different things like that. And so for me, I'm kind of quite used to not being in the office and, and working remotely. Normally, I'm working remotely in different places every couple of days. So it's been kind of a new experience to be here for the last kind of 90, 95 or, or, or 96 days, I think now. Um, but it's something that I'm quite comfortable with. And I think I've been meeting companies on Skype and Hangouts and, you know, Zoom and all sorts of other platforms for the, the last couple of years and, and have invested in, in many companies that, you know, the first time I met them face to face was long after the, the money had gone into their bank account. So for me, A, it means I think I have a little bit more time for my myself. Right, the time that I'm not commuting to the office or going in between the office, I can, you know, I mean, I'm cooking way more, I'm baking, I'm exercising way more. You know, I have a little bit more time to, to read. Uh, I think there is a balancing act because you do sometimes also forget what day of the week it is. And sometimes your kind of work life can bleed over into your, your real life. So I think you just have to be conscious about those things. But for me, I think remote working has, is, is something I've been comfortable with for a long time. I think many of the companies that I've invested in have fully remote teams or, or, or massively distributed teams around the world and it takes some discipline to kind of do regular stand-ups and regular check-ins and make sure that things are still 
happening. Um, and it takes a lot of trust as well. You know, we've, we've had some companies that have really struggled because they can't, if I can't physically see you doing the work, are you really doing it? Is, is something that I've heard a few times. Um, but, you know, I think once, the, you know, we're seeing lots and lots more tools coming to the market that'll, that'll help with that. And then I think from a Techstars perspective, we, we switched, obviously in, in light of COVID, we switched all of our accelerators to, to virtual ones uh, earlier this year. The good thing from our perspective is we've been running virtual programs in, in the US since 2017. Um, so we've had an, the Techstars Anywhere uh, running over there uh, for the last couple of years. So we had quite a robust playbook for running a virtual program and, and, and how to do that. And, and Techstars as an organization, you know, the last time I counted, we had people in, I think, 34 or 35 different countries. So we're quite a distributed and remote team ourselves. So I think everyone is kind of wishing we had more comfortable chairs at our kitchen tables, perhaps. But uh, I think outside that, you know, our, our goal is and, and, and has always been to, to support founders as much as we can and to support entrepreneurs and help them on their mission to, to change the world. And I think, you know, being able to do that remotely is a little bit different to doing it in person, but it's still eminently doable. And that's what we're, that's what we're doing. I mean, um, I'm sure that few of the companies will also try to provide like home office structure, like maybe like comfortable pairs. This is what I've seen from a lot of the companies that my friends work for like Google or Facebook because they realized how many perks that they actually had in the office building. <laughs> yeah. So they're asking for that. I don't know how they are going to turn up uh, in their own lives, but also we are ha having a few questions. But since we were talking about that part, I generally ask the same question to all of my guests because now we work more and especially people like you who travels a lot, uh, it is really tough uh, to realize that you are actually spending so many times commuting to planes, going to, from airports to hotels, etc., etc., then you realize that you have so many times, uh, so much time in your hand. Uh, what are the things, even if everything goes back to normal, let's say that in five months time, everything is normal, so you are flying to Colorado, then Paris, doing an event there or a meeting there. So what would you like to keep it in your life while you are living uh, home, home setting right now because you can cook more, uh, spend yourself self, uh, more time or invest in yourself in different ways. So which would you, what would you like to keep it in your life? I think, I think there's a couple of things. I think one thing that I've realized is I'm, I'm definitely going to travel a lot less. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I made the mistake of, of doing lots and lots of little short trips here and there. So you fly for like one day, you're home for a day, you fly somewhere else for two days, you're home. I think in the future, you know, if I'm going to do a trip somewhere, I'm going to go for a week or I'm going to go for 10 days and I'm going to do three stops along the way. So kind of fewer trips, but more meaningful ones, I think is, is one big thing. Um, I think keeping the habit of, of exercising, I, you know, I used to walk to and from the office mm -hmm. most days. I mean, certainly when the weather permitted it in London, which isn't, isn't always, um, and that, that always helped clear my mind. But now I've started kind of going for a, for a run almost every day, certainly five days, days a week. And I think that habit has like helped me kind of retain even more or, or be even more focused. And, um, I can certainly feel it in my, my energy levels as well. So I think, you know, those are two big things. And, and then the other thing is just kind of making time to actually read, you know, the, the, the mistake that I made an awful lot is you kind of read a couple of articles here and there, you see something interesting on Twitter and click into it and read it. And it's 200 words or 300 words on a topic you know, one of the really nice things about lockdown, and it was something a friend of mine told me actually, and the, the, we did a, a webinar the, I think maybe the first or second week of, of lockdown with, with uh, uh, Jenny Fielding who runs Techstars in New York. And we did it for, for a couple of hundred Techstars founders who were worried about what to do next. Both Jenny and I had run companies in the previous kind of financial crisis. So we're able to talk about, look, if you have to do layoffs or if you have to furlough people or how to raise capital in, in tough times. And, you know, one of the things that she said was, you know, you kind of, you, you can take an hour's break and, and sit in a park or sit on your balcony and, and read like a chapter of a book, you know, read something that's a little bit more, more meaningful. And I think that was something, you know, when you're in the office, I think sometimes you feel guilty, like you kind of don't want to go, I'm going to sit over here and read a book for a while. You know, you kind of eat your lunch at your desk, you answer emails, like you just don't take that step back. And I think even during the, the working day, being able to go, you know what, no, I'm going to take a proper 30 or 45 minute break halfway through the day. I'm going to have a 
sandwich or I'm going to have a salad and I'm going to like put my attention to something that isn't sending emails, uh, I think I'd like to retain that if I can. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's much similar to me as well. I really like walking and when I generally walk, it's mostly for my, myself, like my mind to clear that out. And sometimes I do have like podcasts, maybe on a specific yeah. topics. Now I don't have that very much, but I can take my walks whenever I want. And uh, I think like with the guilt and in between everything, it is really tough when you are working, especially like the office place, yeah. when you don't have a lunch break, because I don't know, I don't really think that nobody, even in your environment is going to, uh, put fingers on you, like, hey, it's not working. Nobody will do that. But personally, it's the same for me as well. I don't really take the time, but we really do need to take a time, like 35 minutes, 45 minutes, so that we can actually properly function after that. <laughs> Otherwise, it's yeah. going to get pulled up. So, like, uh, ex-founder ex like yourself, uh, one of the questions is, they're asking about, like, COVID came with, like, health concerns. It's, horrible, I'm not even discussing that. Uh, it is a huge pandemic and changed our lives, but also bring like a huge economic impact. So mm -hmm. uh, in terms of startup founders, because they need to run their companies as well at the end of the day, which kind of skills did you see that makes them more? I mean, I'm not maybe asking for the new ones that you are going to have on board, but more like uh, alumni perspective, the old graduates, what who are doing best and which kind of skills that supports that? So I think the, the ones that have done the best are, you know, to, I'll take it back a step. So when, we, um, when we're screening companies for tech stars, we, we look at companies through kind of six lenses, right? So it's team, 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 market, traction, idea, uh, in that order. And so for us, the, the people that we're investing in are far more important than the idea that they're working on. And that's largely because 20 or 30 percent of the time the idea that those people are working on will be different at the end of the program than it was at the at the start so i think we want to make sure that we're investing in people who are a resilient right so i, I you know and, and certainly the companies that have come through this most recent um crisis with, with, with kind of flying colors or who have um, been able to kind of weather the the storm most effectively are the ones where early on in this process they realized okay we're going to maybe have to cut salaries, we're maybe going to have to furlough people, we're going to have to, you know, rethink our business model. If we're an enterprise, you know, if we're selling into enterprise, if we're selling into healthcare, like our sales cycle just went from being maybe six months to being maybe 18 months. Mm -hmm. right? And so what can we do in, in this circumstance to, to be better? And, and people who have the, the, the ability to kind of deal with that information overload and, 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 and manage it, and, and which leads on to the next skill that they need, which is being adaptable. Right, like they, you know, we've we've had companies. We had a company called Vitru Health, who were building a computer vision solution for for musculoskeletal health, so they can uh, scan your body, watch you as you move around, and and they work with physios and orthopedic surgeons to identify you know issues with knees and hips and um, posture and other areas. Now, right now, physios and orthopedic surgeons are not really doing an awful lot of work, right? You can't, in fact, you probably can't even go and see physio in this part of the world. And so their sales cycle effectively dried up. So what they did was A, they kind of went, okay, we're not gonna be able to sell anything, but we can focus on building a much better version of the product so that when you know we, we come back out at the far end of this, we can, we can have a better product. And so they spent a lot of time, like really overemphasized on, on customer development and customer relationships. And so they were speaking to people who otherwise they wouldn't have had the opportunity to speak to. So physios who would have been working 10, 12 hour days, orthopedic surgeons who would have been in, in surgery. So they had loads and loads of these conversations, refined the product over time, and also then went, Actually, one other big impact on people's musculoskeletal health will be what we just discussed. Everyone is sitting in chairs that are not designed for you to sit in them for, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours a day. And so now they've launched a, a remote working um, solution that they're, that they're bringing out to employers to say, look, you can monitor your employees' musculoskeletal health. You can give them recommendations on how to improve it. You can start to identify issues before they happen. And, you know, in order for a company that was very healthcare focused to suddenly switch into one that's much more, you know, focused on workplace wellness. It's a big step. And so you need to have resilience, you need to have adaptability and, and, and ultimately you need also to be, uh, we think of it as, as kind of being coachable. So will you listen to feedback from other people and are you willing to take that on board and, and take, a, take action 
based on based on what other folks advise. And sometimes taking action is going, no, that's not right. We're going my way. Or sometimes it's going, 20% of what you said was right. We're going to add to our products. And, and I think that's something that's really important, particularly in the context of tech stars, a huge component of what we do is connecting people to mentors. And, and you know, we talk about ourselves as a mentorship driven accelerator program. So if we bring in a company that won't listen to the hundred mentors that they meet during the program, we're wasting the mentors time, the company is wasting their time and fundamentally we're wasting, we're wasting ours. So I think that resilience, adaptability and coachability are, are three of the really important things that people will need coming out of this because we don't know, you know, we, I think the, the, the big issue at the moment is in 2000, 2007, 2008, 2009, you could see there was a problem in the financial markets and there were clear steps that people could take in order to, 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 to fix those. And there was a, a, at least a path that you could kind of see towards recovery. Whereas now people are kind of going, well, are we going to have a vaccine? Are we going to have a second wave? You know, you look at the, the statistics coming out of the US at the moment and think That's, that, that doesn't look great. Um, so there's still huge kind of uncertainty. And so any founder that's starting or, or running businesses now needs to be you know, hugely resilient and hugely adaptable. I mean, this is, I think, not never going to change because all startups are about like adoption. It's about learning. So it's always going to be team. If it's a pandemic, it's a financial crisis whatsoever because uh, the good thing about startups is they are quite agile and they can respond to whatever there is a problem or there is an opportunity. It takes a little bit uh, tough decisions to execute it. So. I think it's not going to change soon enough. So I think we are going to close a little uh, in a few minutes. And I'm sure that people will be interested in maybe like trying to understand what, what else do you have maybe to contact you or Techstar. So what would you suggest people to do with like going to your Techstars, maybe finding you on LinkedIn or Twitter. So yeah. it's on you. I'm, I'm really, the, the good thing about being called Eamon Carey um, and having an Irish name in, in the technology world is that my SEO is very good. So um, I'm pretty easy to find on LinkedIn, very open to connecting with people on there. Um, if people are interested in learning more about Techstars, you can go to techstars.com uh, and there you'll find a bunch of information about companies that have gone through our program before, some of the upcoming accelerator programs that we're running. I think we have maybe 12 or 13 programs that will open for applications in the next two to three weeks, I think early July, the next batch of, of, of applications open. And that'll cover everything from Singapore, Europe, US, uh, Australia. So we, we have a, a lot of programs that are opening up across different verticals and, and, and also some that are just much more general. So definitely techstars.com or, or, or find me on LinkedIn and, and feel free to um, add me as a connection, ask me any questions that you have. I'm, I'm happy to try and reply. Perfect. Really, thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, I hope that people also enjoy it and maybe they will check out the new programs that Techstars have in different parts of the world. So uh, until next time, thanks very much. Have thank you for your time. I appreciate it. See you. Bye-bye. Take care.